Media Fill Aseptic Process Simulation as per EU Annex 1 2023. Hi everyone, are you looking for updates in EU Annex 1 for Media Fill or Aseptic Process Simulation? What action should be taken in case of failed APS? Is acceptance criteria zero growth? Let's take a full understanding for APS as per updated EU Annex 1 2023. Welcome to GMP Insights. In this video we will learn about aseptic process simulation, media fill as per EU Annex 1. In updated EU Annex 1, media fill detailed description is given in point no 9.0 Environmental and Process Monitoring. Aseptic process simulation, APS, or media fill refers to the practice of simulating and validating the procedures and conditions used in aseptic manufacturing processes. Aseptic processing is a critical method in the pharmaceutical, biotechnology, and food industries for maintaining the sterility of products during their production. It involves handling and manipulating sterile materials in a controlled environment to prevent contamination. APS is requirement as primary means to validate verify effectiveness of controls in place for aseptic processing using sterile nutrient media. Also, it is recommended to determine aseptic process through process design, pharmaceuticals quality system, process controls, training and evaluation of monitoring data. Media selection. Media should be able to imitate product characteristics poses risk to product sterility. If surrogate material such as buffer is used, it should not inhibit microbial growth. Media should be capable of growing of microorganism as per pharmacopoeia and in-house isolates. Plan development. APS plan should consider points to imitate as closely as possible. 1. APS should include all aseptic operations subsequent to sterilization to container closure. 2. For non-filtrable product, addition steps should be assessed if any. 3. Where inert gas used in operation, gas should be replaced with air for example, if nitrogen is used in operation, it should be replaced with compressed gas. 3. Inert gas can be used if anaerobic simulation is required. 4. Simulation of individual operation for example drying, blending, milling, subdivision of sterile powder should be avoided or justified and cover the whole process. 5. Lyophilized product process simulation should represent the entire process including filling, transport, loading, dwell time, unloading and sealing with worst case operation justification. 1. Use compressed gas instead of nitrogen. 2. Replicate lyophilizer maximum hold time. 3. Replicate maximum hold time between filtration and lyophilization. 4. Mimic worst case for example. Loading largest number of trays. 6. It is required to consider that if any processing stage may impact of microbial contamination recovery such as aseptically produces materials for example, semi-solids, powders, solids, microspheres, liposomes and process such as cooling, heating or lyophilization used, alternative process should be used to represent the operation. Plan should also consider manipulations and interventions. One. Inherent and corrective interventions. These interventions represents as performed in routine operation and at similar frequency based on the risk posed to product sterility. EU Annex 1 also specify that APS should not be used to justify any practice that pose unnecessary contamination risk. APS plan should also consider as below. 1. Identify worst case. Identification of worst case for APS should include container size, line speed, process parameters, maximum holding time for product and equipments. 2. Bracketing approach may be used for same container closure if process equivalency is scientifically justified. 3. Fill volume. Fill volume per container should be sufficient to ensure that media contact the entire inner surface of container and provide sufficient headspace to support potential microbial growth. 4. Use air to substitute inert gas. 5. Result interpretation method should be scientifically justified. 6. APS duration should be sufficient to challenge process, interventions, shift changes and process environment. 7. APS should cover extended or maximum operator presence in clean rooms. 
8. ASP should simulate aseptic process interruptions for example shift changeovers, recharge dispensing vessels, introduction of additional equipment. 9. Ensure environmental monitoring shall be performed as per routine frequency. 10. For campaign manufacturing, APS should be designed to cover risk associated with start and end process of campaign and duration of manufacturing does not pose any additional risk to the product sterility. 11. End of manufacturing may be used for investigation or addition assurance purpose with justification in CCS. 11. Also, it should demonstrate that any product residue does not impact recovery of microbial contamination. Batch size. As per EU Annex 1, batch size should be large enough to represent routine operation, cover all interventions and surfaces that may come into contact with product. Also, simulated media, end of incubation, should demonstrate recovery of microorganism. For manual operation, batch size should mimic actual batch size. Frequency of APS. As per EU Annex 1. Initial validation. Initial validation should cover at least three consecutive successful runs. Revalidation. After any significant modification of practices, facility, services or equipment which may impact product sterility. For example, modification in HVAC system, equipment, process, number of shifts, number of personnel, major facility shout down. APS should be performed before shutdown or decommissioning or relocation of line. Periodic revalidation. Twice a year for each aseptic process, filling line and shift. Each operator should participate in at least one successful run annually. For manual operation. Initial qualification. At least three consecutive successful runs with each type of container, closure and equipment and operator. Revalidation. One run every six months for each operator. Number of units to be filled during APS. As per EU Annex 1, number of units filled during APS should be sufficient to simulate all activities of manufacturing process and justified in CCS. Typically, 5,000 to 10,000 units are filled and for small batches under 5,000 units, it should be equal to actual batch size. Repeat of initial validation. 1. In case of specific aseptic process and not in operation for long time. 2. Change in process, equipment, procedure or environment or addition of new container, closure. Incubation. Filled units should be agitated, swirled or inverted before incubation. All integral units shall be incubated and evaluated including units with cosmetic defects or passed through non-destructive and process checks. If units are discarded during APS, number of units should be lower or equal to routine fill and specified in SOP. In no case, discarded unit should not be more than units discarded during routine operation. Typically, to understand process, incubate these units, for example units filled after setup process, specific intervention as per SOP, and it is not necessary to include these units in APS acceptance criteria. APS should include to simulate activity like product flush and incubate it as part of APS and must clearly demonstrate that this waste does not impact on product sterility. Filled unit should be incubated without delay. Selection of incubation condition and duration should be justified and validated. Container used for media fill. Units should be clear container to ensure visual detection of microbial growth and when clear container with identical configuration is not possible, a suitable microbial growth detection method should be developed and validated. Identification of recovered microorganisms. Identification should be performed up to species level. Observation of APS units. 1. Personnel should be trained and qualified for observation of any microbial growth. 2. Inspection condition should facilitate identification of any microbial growth. 3. After incubation, filled units should be inoculated with reference organisms and in-house isolate to check the media suitability. Acceptance criteria. As per EU Annex 1, target should be zero growth. Any contaminated unit should result in a failed APS. Action to be taken in case of failed APS. 1. Initiate an investigation to determine the probable root cause. 2. Determine and implement CAPA. 3. 
Take repeat minimum three successful runs of APS to demonstrate state of control. 4. Review of all records since last APS, including as risk to potential sterility breach to batches manufactured since last successful APS. Batches not released to market should be in scope of investigation and investigation outcome should for considered to take release decision. Batches manufactured subsequent to APS should be quarantined. Operator should be retrained and requalified if investigation indicates. Production should resume after successful APS. Documentation. Documentation should be robust including details of filled units, incubated, not incubated with justification, interventions with start and end time with person involved and microbial data. Abort of APS run. APS sun should be aborted if written procedure requires commercial lots be equally handled and investigation should be documented in such case. Thank you all for watching. If you found it informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming regulatory updates. Thanks for watching.